All right, you can die. All right, Tara. This is proof dough, plunk, nice and wet. This is gonna be the first time I add any flour to it because I'm gonna shape it now for tell me call it mini baguettes. Yeah. So I'm gonna sprinkle a bit of flour on it. You'll notice that now the dough is nice and smooth, greasy looking even, but it's nice and wet and you stick to it pretty easy. I'm just gonna basically now cut it and divide it. So I'm gonna go in half. And for this recipe, eight eight buns. So you can go in half again. And then one more time, every, everything gets divided in half again. Keeping it in the well-soaked flour. It's pretty sticky. We'll dust it all again now. Boom, 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 boom. Or you can weigh it all out. Just as easy to divide it like that. Give it all now and a good liberal dusting again. Keep it from sticking. Now my object here, I've got a baker's couche, which is just a cotton pillowcase, well floured, as you can see. All right, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna lay them on it, and then I'm gonna put a little loop in between them so I can keep them separated. If you look on YouTube, you'll see it's pretty standard stuff. Okay, so I'll start with some dough here and I'll try to do it far enough away so you can see it. All right, so all I'm going to do is take the piece I got, punch it down a bit, get the air out of it. All right, use a bit of flour if you have to, if you feel some sticky spots. Roll it over towards you. Roll it over towards you. Roll it over towards you. With that seam kind on the side, I'm punching down. I'm just kind of sticking it. You're left with a kind of elongated shape. Keep it. Now you're just going to roll it out as evenly as you can. It's hard to do on a dusted surface. It's easier if it's a little bit more sticky. So on a well-dusted baker's couche, you know. You can use parchment paper. I've, used, I've done it with parchment. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to let it proof here. All right, I'm going to do the same thing now for the second one. So you'll see again what I'm doing. I'm squishing it out. It's kind of more rectangle than square or round. I'm going to roll it. Pinch. Roll. Pinch. Roll. Sticky there. I'm going to dust it. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Squat. 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 I'm pinching that seam. Again, I'm going to roll it a little bit. Don't worry about what it looks like, shape, that's what makes it artisan. Some of these are a little bit bigger, some are a little bit smaller. All right, now, so I'm just on a wooden cutting board here now. You can put them in a cookie sheet or whatever you want just to hold on to them. So there's, there's one roll in my baker's couche. So I'll do this and I'll continue it and I'll keep the cotton well floured. And again, packing it down, little rectangle, roll the thing towards you, pinch it, roll it, pinch it, roll it, pinch it. Don't worry about it if it's uneven. Again, it's an artisan loaf. It's going to look a little funky. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And that was nice and long. Okay, so there's a bit more bread dough on that one. Try to put your seam down if you're going over here. Put your seam down. Nice again if it's well floured, because it will stick to the cotton a bit if you don't. And again, a little dusting on the board, counter, pack it down, little rectangle, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. I'm not checking these angles. I don't know if you can see or not. Bit tacky, let's get some more dust on it. Pinch, 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 flatten, roll it. Again, 
practice makes perfect. The more times you do this, the better you're going to get it. These are actually turned out a little longer than the last batch I showed. And flatten it out, rolling it towards me. And as you roll it, and as you do it like this, you end up a little, a little bit longer. If you wanted to proof these like this, take them, flatten them out, and roll them again, or, or not, not flatten them out, but take them, take them from here after they proof, and put them back and roll them out an even longer because they've relaxed since they've been here. Now you can stretch them out even longer. Right? My technique is not very good. Again, put a little loop in. And there we are. You getting it? Okay, so packing the air out, dust it in sticky spots, roll it towards you. Pinch, roll it towards you. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Fingers are starting to get doughy. Now, not that big over here. Probably an inch and a half. You know, maybe. Some are five or six inches long, some are an eight or nine, you know, but give or take from this kind of dough that you got, these are the sizes you're going to be dealing with. And you don't need to go through all this trouble. If you end up with a loaf that, you know, that you can stretch out and get into an oblong kind of shape that you can use as a sandwich dough, so that's all you need. Again, these aren't true baguettes. A real Frenchman would shoot me by saying that these were baguettes. These are just artisan loaves. Shaped like baguettes. Another loop. Now, I have a pizza stone in my oven. And uh, I'm not going to fit all these on a pizza stone at once. It's a round pizza stone. So I might, I might do them in batches. But uh, if I can fit more in, in there, I could put my, uh, a cookie sheet maybe in on a second rack. I could do that. But actually, in my oven, when I'm doing this, I got a pan in the bottom that I keep hot water or steam in my oven while these are cooking. Because a steamy oven helps promote nice crispy crust again something else you learn in those youtube videos boom bob is your uncle wash my hands right quick over and show you. So that's what the baguettes look like when they're in the rising stage proofing on the baker's couche. And that's what they look like when they're cooked. Right. Nice little size of sandwich loaves. And uh, now the secret to cooking them is a really hot oven. So you want your oven up to about 450 if you can handle it. I've only gone up to 430 in mine because I don't really trust it. I don't have a fire. And it seems to do okay. With the humidity in the oven, with lots of nice humid, humid steam, you can even open your door when you're putting your bread in, give it a spritz of water all around the inside the oven, even on top of the bread. When it's going into the oven, that's what you're going to do. You're going to give it a little spritz. And it helps give you a crispier crust. Don't open the oven in the first 20 minutes of baking. Leave them in for at least 20 minutes. Watch the color. I will warn you that you can get 
nice color on top it looks lovely nice brown and then if if you're not careful they can be a little pale underneath right so make sure you cook them long enough to give them a little crisp but if you like them soft and a bit chewier still got a crunch if you go five or ten minutes longer than that that was probably about 25 minutes at 4 30. if you go a little longer than that you're going to get a lot crispier harder to chew certainly but again that's a baguette nice and crispy and crackly and you got her anyway that's it they're going to proof now but this is how i kind of shape into a mini baguette and uh that gives me this i'm no expert it's not a baguette it's a mini artisan loaf but they're yummy okay bye